All right, everybody, welcome to this week's edition of the Business Owners Mastermind Call. My name is John Pyron. I'm your host and my co-host, Mr. Alan Reeves here. Alan, say hi. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for being here. Awesome. So for you guys that uh, are listening to this call on the recording, highly recommend, highly, highly, highly recommend you attend it live. Or you can ask all the questions that you have about your business and get some masterminding uh, from other business owners uh, on your business. So that's what we do here. The structure of this call is we're going to talk about some, some different business topics, and then um, we're going to open it up for live Q&A and coaching on this call. So I always reward the people that got here early because there will be other people that arrive here in a little bit. And so let's kind of go around the room, introduce ourselves, what our business is, and what our target uh, clients are. And let's start off with Kramisha. You were here first. Kramisha, tell us about you and your business and and where you're located. Hello, everyone. My name is Kramisha. I am the owner of Lady Cage Transportation, LLC. I provide private transportation anywhere you like, prefer, preferably long distance um, trips, but I go anywhere, airport, runarounds, events, parties, bachelor parties, whatever you name it. Um, that's what I do. And what else did you say? I forget. <laughs> uh, where are you located? Um, I'm in Phoenix, Arizona. Awesome. Awesome. Well, welcome to the call. Thank you. Um, Dan Knapp. Yes, sir. Hello, my name is Dan Knapp. I'm the owner of Red Hot Media Productions, and I do website design and video production and animations. Um, we have a program called Biz Sites, which gets an entry level or gets a website in for a uh, small business for $749 with a $49 monthly setup uh, charge. So, there. Awesome. Welcome awesome. to the call. <laughs> Allie. <laughs> Hi, guys. <clears throat> uh, Allison Pyron. I am actually in the process of um, starting my own business. Uh, just started actually last week. And so uh, what I'm doing is virtual assistant type business. So out there, you can think of yourselves as business owners who um, do not have um, the favorite things on your list that you just don't like doing and would rather um, push it off and push it off until you absolutely have to. And that's where I come in. And so... Um, I will team up with you and and help you move your business along and take those tasks uh, that you would prefer to delegate to someone else. Awesome. Alan Reeves. Everybody, I'm Alan Reeves. Uh, I own Mouse Calls Technology Solutions headquartered in Nashville, Tennessee with clients in 26 states. I also uh, am a partner in a company called Luminosity that provides identity theft protection solutions for resellers, affiliates, and organizations that want to offer that service as a white label product. Awesome. And Alan's also the co-host here. Uh, right. All right. So my name is John Pyron, and uh, they call me the business doctor. Uh, I've been building companies for this year. It'll be 31 years. Uh, I've had a lot of fun times Bad times, great partnerships, bad partnerships, um, made lots of money, lost it all. Um, yeah, I went through all kinds of different phases and, and challenges that you face as a small business owner. Uh, many years ago, converted to just working and consulting business owners all over the country. Had a blast, deal with lots of different business problems every week, times 52 weeks, and it's not much that I can't really help a business owner out with. As the business doctor strategy is the example would be I run into a problem I have, after I've worked with a client or I've diagnosed it just like you would go to a doctor's office and you go in there and the doctor inspects you and, and, and basically says, you know what, it's really beyond my skill set, but I need you to go over and see this specialist. So whenever I have any any issues like that or challenges like that that I run across, technology problem i go you know what you really need to go talk to alan reeves he's the specialist in that area uh you know if there's a website issue hey you really need to go talk to dan knapp he's really the specialist in that area so 
knowing what um, uh, being able to fix a business owner's problem and help them out with their challenges is something that I really enjoy doing. So with that said, let's get going. Um, Alan, I'll, why don't you go first this time? What, what's on your mind today? What would you like to share with business owners out there? Um, anything on your mind? Got a couple of, well, I got several things, but I'm just going to take a couple uh, because they are relevant. One is a direct threat to millions of businesses around the country right now. If you have a sonic wall firewall or a VPN appliance at your place of business, and yes, there are millions. This is a, this is a product that was owned and manufactured by Dell for a long time. Uh, you need to make sure that your IT provider or your internal IT staff has updated that device because there are um, three different series of sonic wall firewalls that have been found in the last 48 hours to have a zero day vulnerability and they are being actively exploited by bad actors as we speak. Basically what this means is there is a backdoor into your business network and there are bad guys knocking on the doors of business networks of all shapes and sizes it might be two employees, it might be 2,000. But if you are running a sonic wall network appliance, you need to get with your IT provider and make absolutely certain that it has the latest updates. If it does not, you are a sitting duck. So there's that. If you don't know whether you have a sonic wall, then you meet, you probably need to ask yourself, why don't I know this? Well, you know, this this is. This is a piece of the spinal cord of my business technology network. It is an especially vulnerable spot. Um, if you don't necessarily know it or, or, or if your IT provider doesn't know what you have, get somebody in there that can give you a second opinion that does. So that is, um, that is something extraordinarily, um, extraordinarily important that every business owner do um, across the board, whether you have a sonic wall or not, figure out what you have so that you know where you're exposed. Um, secondly, there is a movement, which I fully support, um, that is happening right now in my industry, being led by people that I respect to generate some sort of certification and regulatory body for IT service providers. We're basically, um, not just every Tom, Dick, and Harry can hang up a shingle and say, hey, I'm an IT company. Because those guys, those, those inexpensive computer guys are exposing a lot of businesses to a lot of threats. And the day where, the, the days where technology is no longer looked at as a profession basically need to go away. If, if you are running your healthcare practice or your business and you're just calling some guy or the brother-in-law or a high school kid uh, whenever something goes wrong, it's a matter of time before you find yourself with a business threatening crisis due to a cybersecurity problem and or data loss. Um, this could result in extortion of your business. This could result in um, patient records being exposed and sold to the outside internet. There, there's so many different ways. Folks, I mean, we had a flower, we, we have a flower shop as a client and about three years ago, someone broke in their network and stole their customer's, social, or not social security numbers, but credit card numbers and started making purchases. And we had to go in there and lock them down. They're a flower shop. You think they thought they were a target? Absolutely not. It's any size business. So, um, I am all about I am all about that movement. I am all about um, I am all about the fact that you, you know every business person needs to differentiate in some form or fashion. And in in the technology world, there are there's all kinds. I'll be honest with you. You know, any just about anybody can put something out there and claim to be an IT person. So do your research. Do your due diligence. Get somebody in there that can get you a network site survey and give you an idea of what you really have, what you're really dealing with, how you are exposed, how you're being run. And, um, you know, cross your, cross your T's and dot your I's. You owe it to yourself. And you can typically get it done. Um, you can get it done pretty inexpensively. Or uh, in our case, if you, you know, 
if we do an audit and you sign on with us, then uh, there's no charge for the audit, none whatsoever. So that's my spiel for the week. It's a direct warning and also a piece of uh, piece of advice for all business owners. So anyways, um, so to, to kind of uh, tag, tag on to what you were saying is, and you've ran across this for all the 25 years you've been in business, how many times do you do, and I experienced this when I owned IT companies, how, how many times do you run across a new client and the new client, you go, hey, you know what, let me come in and give you a second opinion of how your network is set up. Uh, which is, by the way, a best practice that all you small business owners should really consider is if you're not a computer engineer and a computer tech, you should really consider having an IT company, preferably mouse calls because I'm biased, uh, come in and do a second opinion assessment uh, of your computer network to let you know if it's set up right or if it's not. Because I can just tell you from experience, and Alan can verify this, um, I don't know how many times I run across a new client or a prospective client. We go to assess their network, and they, they go, well, uh, I don't know uh, the password to that. Um, I, I don't know if I got a firewall. I don't know if I got this or that. And, and basically, whoever they've been using for their IT person has kept them in the dark for years about how their computer network is set up. That's a big problem because if that person disappears, you're screwed, okay? Number one. Number two, there must be a reason why they don't want to give you access to your own network that you actually own. <laughs> you know? mm -hmm. And and it's because of having somebody come in and assess it and, and give you the truth about what's really going on. Find this all the time. Uh, where you go in, you assess the network, and, and they have been uh, paying this guy or this gal or this company for many years. And because they, quote unquote, don't have a problem, and when they have a problem, the IT person's quick quick Johnny on the spot to fix the problem. They're like, well, hey, I'm, we, everything must be great. Until you get in there and discover, you know what, you have all the ports open up on your firewall. You're wide open to the world. Oh, by the way, somebody has already hacked in here and stolen a bunch of stuff. Oh, by the way, your top salesperson emailed the entire company database out of this network and is going and starting a new company. I mean, the problems are endless. So if you're a small business owner and you haven't had a second opinion assessment of your network, it should be something that you do at least twice a year, pay an outside company to come in and do that. I know Mouse Calls does that, and they do an excellent job of it. So – uh, we just did one to for a, a company that I'm not going to mention. Um, you know, it had been maintained by another um, a firm for years, and the amount of problems that were in, in existence is is incredible. It's just it's it's uh, it should be criminal, <laughs> to be quite honest. Um, and so, if you don't have a if you haven't had a second opinion of that, then I would highly recommend you do it. And I'm, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to interject just one super quick thing about that client. Sure. That client was sold tens of thousands of dollars of network equipment, switches and and so forth by their their former IT provider. Yep. But that IT provider left in place cabling that limited the connectivity to one tenth of the potential speed. And all, the, all they had to do was swap out a three-foot cable. And by not doing that, they were, they were bottlenecking this network that cost, like I said, upwards of $10,000, $20,000 just for the equipment alone because they weren't paying attention to detail. And that's just scratching the surface. And that's the kind of yeah. stuff that we find. Yeah. Yeah, so the, the whole premise here is Whatever you're not great at as a business owner, find somebody who is great at it and hire them or outsource to them. You'll save yourself so much time, energy, and effort, and you'll make a whole lot more money and be a lot more happier. So I hope that's been valuable. One thing I want to touch on today, and real quick before I open it up for Q&A, and I'll send this to whoever wants it, um, 
is it's that time of the year where you need to do a quarterly business review. And so I'm going to kind of – so you can get the recording and go back and watch this, and I'll share this document with whoever wants it. Just send me a text at 916-741-0596 and say quarterly business review template, and I'll gladly give this to you. So pretty much once a quarter, you want to sit down and really evaluate your business, and this is a template I use with my one-on-one uh, -on -one clients. It works out very well. Uh doesn't take much time. But you need to understand, okay, what is the revenue that you had over the current quarter that you're evaluating? How did it compare to the previous quarter in the previous year? What were your operating expenses uh, percentage-wise as it relates to revenue uh, this quarter versus last quarter and last year? And then this is a big factor that a lot of people don't even know about as small business owners. But this is what an investor – or anybody that is going to look at this is the very first thing that they're going to figure out if they're looking to buy your company or if you're curious about how much you can actually sell your company for, term called EBITDA. And it stands for earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization. So in a typical financial statement, you have your income. As the top line, then you have your cost of goods sold, any cost that went and was associated to delivering on that income sold, and then you're left with what's called gross profit. And depending on the type of business that you have, there are metrics out there for best-in-class numbers that you should become familiar with in your specific industry. And if you need help with that, by all means, reach out to me and let me know. But you got gross profit, and then after that comes your general business expenses. It's normally called SG&A, so sales expenses, general business expenses, and administrative costs. Below, then what you get is your net profit. Below that is where you take out your interest, your taxes, your depreciation, and any type of amortization if you have real property. But if your financials are not set up like that, then you really need to talk to your CPA and have them set it up like that because that's what an investor is going to look at when it comes to the value of your company. And so I have my clients look at their EBITDA every single quarter. Is It, it should be going up. should not be going down. Okay, and But if you let this go without looking at it for a year, you're going to look back and go, oh, crap, my books are messed up, my financials are messed up, or I have no idea what happened, right? So if your books are set up properly, you should be able to run this report in less than 30 seconds and, and get an instant read on where your business is at. And like I said, if you need help getting that set up, just let me know. The other thing I tell them is, hey, what are the key issues? What are the key issues that you have right now in your business? Then we look at their business plan, and I operate – if you're a business that's under $2 million a year in revenue, a one-page strategic business plan is sufficient for that. Once you get beyond one and a half to two million and you have to put a management structure and you have a leadership team in place, then it makes sense to switch to what's called a VTO, which is called a vision traction organizer because it requires a management team for that to be effective. It's a two pager. And so um uh, you know, you want to look at okay, where are you at with your objectives for the current year? Are you on track or are you not? Um this is a good time of the year, especially the second half of the year. This is the only time of the year I even think about or talk to clients about uh, modifying their objectives, and usually we're increasing their objectives. Or in the case of COVID last year, we had to significantly modify object objectives because there's no way in heck we were going to achieve them. So we had to set some more realistic objectives based off the environment. Then we want to look at every single quarter, and this is really important is what are the strategies that you used last quarter to achieve those objectives? What were the results? Did they work? Did they not work? Do we need to – I make my clients – you know, we, it's either uh, green light, yellow light, or red light. Green light means knocked it out of the park. The strategy worked beautifully. We're going to continue with it. Yellow light means that we really need to make some modifications or improvements. Red means we didn't even use it, it didn't work, it was a waste of time, and we, we get rid of it, okay? And so we look at, okay, what are the strategies we're gonna work that worked in the previous quarter, what didn't work, what needs to be added, modified, changed, or renewed? Um, 
for the next quarter. And so once we get through that, then we want to look at sales, sales and marketing. What were the major wins and losses for the first quarter of 2021? I had a client of mine that just finished up their quarterly review yesterday. And what we thought, we've been together almost three years. Um, what we thought was the biggest uh, profit maker in their business stack turned out to actually go from position one down to position three. And the one area that is now become the major profit center is now number one. So what that's going to allow us to do, because we actually evaluated and got into the analytics of this, and we just looked at straight profit. Okay, what is the most profitable product line or service line that we have? So what we ended up doing is we go, okay, instead of spending all these marketing dollars over here, uh, we're going to reallocate some of those marketing dollars and reallocate some other strategies over here to this 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 area that has now become super duper profitable, which is going to help us achieve our goals faster. So, what are the major wins and losses for the quarter? Uh, what are the notable items for the quarter? And 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 we evaluate what is that third quarter pipeline because we're right now in the going into the third quarter. What new clients do we want to bring on? What new projects do we want to have? You know, a whole laundry list of stuff. And in every business plan I do, there's a parking lot area. And so uh, we want to figure out, okay, what is, how do we increase, what kind of increase do we want to see over the next three months? A lot easier to, to, to set goals and activity and action plans for three months than it is for a year. And, and so we get that set. And then we discuss anything else. So we, lay, we update and lay out our sales and marketing plan for the next quarter. Which allows us to be accountable. And so what were the results of the second quarter goals? What are the top three or four goals they set for that quarter? What are the new goals, the top three or four goals for this quarter? Different than the objectives on the one-page plan. What are the top three or four things that need the most attention that if we hit these three or four things over the next three months, we are going to just uh, achieve way more than what we're going to achieve if we focus on nine goals. So this is this is probably the most tough exercise here because everybody wants to accomplish everything. But and some people are good at doing that, but my experience personally and with working with lots of clients, if we can whittle that down to the top three goals that you have for the next 90 days that are going to have the biggest impact on your company, it eliminates the uh the squirrel uh effect, meaning as small business owners and entrepreneurs and everybody listening to this recording, if you're in business for any length of time, you know what I'm talking about. There's so many opportunities and ideas going through our heads 24-7, seven days a week. Right? It just never stops. Never, ever, 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 never stops. Well, we need a place to capture that. We can't go after all of it at once because if we go after it all at once, then we don't ever get anything actually done. And so – this measuring this is, is going to be very helpful. Then there's a section I need help. List out the top things you need help with in the new quarter. Uh, make them do a quarterly report because if you don't grow as a leader, your business is going to outgrow you, and that's going to come back to bite you in the butt. Uh, comfortable is your biggest enemy. Okay, when you when you get to a place where you're like, if your goal is to be comfortable, and you get to a place where you're comfortable. Then what's going to end up happening? You're going to get punished in a big way. You're going to get you get something's going to happen. Shit's going to hit the fan. Car's going to die. You know, clients are going to leave. Something's going to happen to get you outside of your comfort zone because that's just part of the human experience. The other thing about comfort zone is like basically what you're telling yourself is I have arrived. You know, I have reached my potential. Well, as long as you're still alive, you still have potential to grow. And companies stall out because the leader stalls out. Okay? Let me say that again because i got two clients right now. Uh, they're not on this call right now, but two clients right now, they're stalling out because the leader has, has neglected uh, their personal growth. And it's starting to come. That rooster's coming home to roost. That's a southern term. Uh, Alan's from the south, so that was for you, my brother. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> so. Uh, but you got to, you got to, what specific things have you done to lead the company? What are the challenges or adaptions that you've made? Uh, what are the challenges you're facing as a leader? What's the positive or negative news? What's pressing or difficult issues? What is the leadership plan update? Life plan. You know, you need, why are you doing this? Um, you know, so we go over the life plan, we go over their legacy plan. 
because every business owner, whether you want to or not, if you begin with, hey, I ultimately want to sell my company or hire somebody to run it, that changes the game. doesn't matter if you're under $1,000 a month in revenue right now. If you begin with the end of mine, where do I ulti- how do I ultimately want to build this thing where I don't have to be a, a slave to it? And too many business owners out there, there was a Facebook memory that came up this morning that I posted nine years ago. And and I, it was a single post, and it basically said, until you have an employee, you're really not a business owner. You know? And and I had to think about, okay, when did I post that? Where where was my mindset? What was my context at the time? And and it's true. When you bring on an employee, an actual W-2 payroll employee. Okay, the entire mindset shifts. Okay, and Alan knows this. The entire mindset shifts. You go from being a self-employed business owner, meaning you own your job, to now a business owner where you got another family, another life dependent upon your actions. And and it's just such a different level of stress, uh, but also positive stuff. And so too many business owners don't make that leap. And over half the small business owners in this country are solo entrepreneurs because they don't make that leap. They're like, man, employees are a hassle. They're a pain in the ass. I don't want to bring them on, blah, blah, blah. But what they don't realize, a good employee will cost you money. Good employees, you know, they show up late. You know, they show up. uh, You know, they kind of do their work. But really, if you had to actually measure their productivity, they're probably around 65, 70% of their 40 hours is actually productive. Great employees, on the other hand, make you money every single time, and they cost you money. Okay, but the difference is, is those people operate anywhere from eighty-five to ninety percent utilization, and they make you a boatload of money. I know because I have a client of mine that we're getting ready to celebrate three years with them. They're on their seventh employee now, and and the average utilization in that company is eighty-nine and a half percent, and they bill. They are a super super profitable cash cow machine. And so, because we took the time to to put the right people in the seat on the bus, and and if somebody wasn't, you know, if they weren't a fit, we got rid of them right away and found somebody else. But good and great employees don't cost you money; they make you money. Okay, so part of your legacy plan. Any personal news, any family news, any trends. I make my clients look at this family thing because you can be all about work. You know, you can have. You can be on a scale of one to ten, ten being you're uh, you're the most productive, busy, great, you know, person. On, you operate at a level ten all the time, and and that's great. But if I was to ask you the same question, is okay on a scale of one to ten, uh, how are you with the relationships that are the most important to you? Um, if you can't answer, you know, seven or above, then you need to really reevaluate how you're spending your time. You know, and so having to look at that on a quarterly basis keeps you accountable. Trends, opportunities, challenges. But once we get through this document, we now have our game plan laid out for the quarter. And the key is is the accountability. Finding somebody. This is what I do for my clients: is uh, uh, execute and hold them accountable. And some more than others. Some, you know. I I was talking to my wife the other night. I'm going, you know what? There's something missing um, in my own business. I'm going, you know what? I need to I need to go back and work with Phil again. Um, as a, a mentor that I had when uh, in 2006 and seven, but I, you know, the relationship we had. As I said, I don't need, you know, great. You can bring some ideas and strategies to the table. That's not what I'm hiring you for. I'm hiring you for to make me look at this freaking plan and make me do this crap every quarter because if I don't hold my have somebody hold me accountable, who else is going to hold me accountable? My wife? I don't think so. My friends? I don't think so. You know, It's going to be somebody that um, um, is going to push me and force me to look at this. When I was talking to Sean Jackson, Jackson Sands, and Frank, I go, hey, um, if you're in a position to uh, uh, refer me to a friend or colleague, would you? And they both said yes. And I go, okay, let's just say you're talking to that person right now. What would you say? You go, you know, um, you make us look at that damn plan every freaking week. You know, you, you literally put it in our face every single week. And as a result, we hit all of our objectives 
the entire time we've been working together. And, um, and he goes, but if I had to pick one thing, that's the one thing. And, and when they said that, I'm going, great, good. I'm, I'm awesome that we have that relationship, but it's, it's every business owner. You know, if you're not peak performing at the, at, at the potential that you know you're capable of performing, then find somebody to hold you accountable. You know, the only times I avoid that is when I don't want to be held accountable and I don't want to grow because I know it's a lot of damn work, you know? And so Steve, Nop I'll, I'll finish with this. Steve Nopton in 2015 approached me in February and said, hey, he just moved here from Australia. He'd already had a $2 million consulting business, and I wanted to do what he was doing. And, and he said, hey, man, because you, you really hooked me up in this town with speaking engagement, I'm going to give you a strategy session for free. So we booked it. Uh, the day before, I canceled it. We booked it again in March. The day before, I canceled it. We booked it again in April. The day before, I canceled it. He finally said, you cannot – I'm giving this to you for free. So May 17, 2015, we, we got together. Now, why did I push it off? I'll be a little transparent with you. Every time I saw it on my calendar and I looked at it, I'm going, the dude is going to hold me accountable. The dude is going to show me all the crap I should be doing, and I don't know that I'm ready to make that change. <laughs> to be quite honest, it wasn't about the money. It wasn't about the business. It wasn't about I had major problems. It wasn't any of that. I knew if I met with the dude, he was going to say, uh, "You're on a scale of one to ten. You're you're a nine here. You're an eight here. You're a two here. You're a three here. And here's what you need to go do." And I was like, "I don't know. That I'm lazy right now. I don't know that I want to actually work that hard." <laughs> that was my, that's an honest answer. So um, uh, I ended up hiring him, and it changed the game. You know, and so if that's you, if you're listening to this recording, if that's you and you're not performing at the level you know you're capable of performing at and you're not going at it the best you can, uh, whether it's me, uh, somebody else, I don't really care. Find somebody that you can be accountable to and make sure that they hold you accountable. So um, with that said, I'm kind of done. I'm not going to rant anymore. I want to open it up to anybody that has any comments, questions, Q&A. Um, the floor is open. Raise your hand or unmute yourself. Or I'll start calling on people. <laughs> so, Dan, Nap, what's on your mind today, man? You need any help? What can we help you out with? You're muted. That's why I can't hear myself talk. <laughs> <laughs> so, what? Several years ago, I was uh, talking to a friend of mine. She she used to work for me at another company, and uh, when we all left that that company folded, um, and when we all left, we stayed friends. And she started her own business, kind of in the same area that that company had been in, <clears throat> and she was using out she was outsourcing her, her cold calls, her lead generation. And she kept telling me, Dan, you need to do this. Dan, you need to do this. I mean, I don't spend any of my time doing lead generation. I don't do my time spending on the calls. Um, you know, I just, I just, I just come in when it's a, you know, it's time for me to close or it's time for me, you know, whatever. So my question is, and I, and, I, and, and she was getting in from overseas and I told her, look, I am in a, I'm in Northern California. I'm in Shasta County. I'm in Redding. There's keep my business calling business owners with a guy from India is not going to go over well. I mean, it's not going to go over well at all. And so I never did it, but I guess the question is, what are your thoughts? And, and it doesn't have to be, you know, somebody with an accent and at all, because um, there's people like Allison out there that are doing um, services like this for businesses. What is your thoughts on outsourcing lead generation and cold calling? That sort of thing. So lead generation and cold calling are two separate things. So <clears throat> lead generation, depending on your type of business, let's just talk about your business, right? Okay. So you do uh, small business websites. Uh, you have a great program where it's flat fee. Here's here's you know 749 bucks. I'm going to do a a basic five pager website. Okay. 
and then I'm going to host it. I'm going to get all the security certificates. I'm going, to, I'm going to do all the maintenance and everything for 49 bucks a month. That's your core offer. That's your core plan, right? So the target audience that you're looking for is small business owners. And so in your case, um, you have LATIP, okay? And LATIP is a national organization of men and women who meet for coffee or, or meet for breakfast or lunch. And typically, it's going to be the smaller business owner in the tip, right? Once you get to a bigger company, 10, 15, 20 employees, you're probably not going to be in the tip, probably going to have other things that you're doing. But that's a huge lead generator. And so you can take somebody, you can have somebody like Allison. This is actually also one of those things that you can outsource overseas um, to Columbia or wherever because they don't need to talk to anybody. They can literally just go in with your login in the tip and scrape the tip. There's like 6,000 members in there. We can give them the criteria, and they can scrape the tip for all the leads in the planet that make sense for you to contact. Okay? And you put them in the database, and then you send them an email. Hey, I'm a fellow LATIP member. I'm up here in Mount Shasta in the Reading area. Uh, I notice you don't have a web developer in your group. Okay. I specialize in small business owner websites specifically for pe people like yourself. We'd love to have a 10-minute call with you. If you got a minute, click on the appointment setting link below to schedule the call. And you task that administrative person out to, to send that out. It's just a script. Okay. Then you can decide, do I want to make the phone calls or do I want to have somebody else make the phone calls? If you operate like that, what I just said it would be more of a warmer call, not an actual cold call. A cold call, the difference between a warm call and a cold call, cold call, I don't know who you are. I've never heard from you. Uh, you've never emailed me. You've never sent me a carrier pigeon. You've never given me – I don't even know who you are, right? And you're calling me out of the blue, and you got about 15 seconds at the most to land a hook, what's called a hook, Okay. And, and that takes a very specific, unique skill set, a very specific type of person that is willing to tolerate that type of object, uh, uh, you know, rejection, right? And that's not you. I know you. I've been working with you for a while. Definitely not you. Okay? You would probably rather go have a root canal every afternoon at 2 p.m. versus picking up a phone and making a phone call, you know, a cold call, right? So um, – but I agree. In your type of business – you need to have somebody that speaks very fluid English, very little accent, um, and, and make those follow-up calls. And so you can outsource that, or um, you can um, you know, do it yourself. Okay, But the, the colder you make that call, the more that that skill set is needed. Now, how do you outsource it? That's the next big question. Well, if I were you… Okay, um, and this is an actually good strategy to have because we've got four people on the call that are they're synergistically tight going after the same client. I would talk to Alan. I would talk to me. I would talk to Allison. I would talk to other network partners like yourself that we're all going after the exact same client, and you co-op that expense. Okay, so you co-op that expense. You split the cost because an appointment for you is an appointment for me. It's an appointment for Alan. It's an appointment for Allison. It's an appointment for the other, other people. It doesn't matter who gets in the door, right? The key is, is getting in the door. And so – but I've had um, uh, actual cold callers, and they usually cost anywhere from 20 to 25 bucks an hour, and they can typically make 50, 60 calls in an hour to a straight-up cold list. And and there are times in your business that it's worth doing that. Your business, there's so many other strategies that we can run to gain new clients that it would be a waste of time, energy, and money. Okay? So in your type of business, you have enough satisfied clients. You have enough access to the tip. You have enough access to network partners. I would just get into a habit of adding five new contacts a day to your database, just five. Five. Five times five is 25 times 4.3 weeks in a month. That's 106 new contacts in your database times 12 months. That's 1,250 or 60 uh, new contacts to your database every single year. You come up with an email script, send it to them. 
you warm them up, and then you have somebody like Allison or somebody else pick up the phone and call them. And you train them on a little short mini script, and you get an appointment because – and I, I, you know, everything I just described, I can do the entire process in my sleep. Do I want to do it? Absolutely not. <laughs> so, so I'm a big fan of outsourcing the stuff you don't like to do and that you're weak at. You know, you talked about scraping the tip. Now, I want to ask you about this because this is something I had done a few years back. And I, I, I thought about it the other day. I was like, I need to go back and do that because I think it would be a very, fairly effective approach. And I was only doing it locally, but you can do this anywhere. And as you know, I'm trying to expand. I, I already have businesses nationwide that are customers in mind, but I don't have to. When I first started web design, I was very localized. I was very much concentrating in the local area. Um, and one of the things I had my daughter do for me one time was go on to the City of Reading website, look and the, and the newspapers, and look for all the new businesses. Because for me, a business that's just starting probably doesn't have a website. And that practice, I could actually expand that out to any town, any, anywhere. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's an incredible, um, incredible opportunity, and both you and Alan and myself are in LATIP. And so, um, and if you're interested, if you're listening to this recording and you're you're curious about LATIP, I'm a, an area rep for Northern California, definitely reach out to me. I'm actually forming a whole brand new chapter starting next week in Folsom. And so, but this is what I'm talking about. Can you guys see my screen? Yep. All right. So if I go down here, this is the access. So again, I, I'm, I got admin access because of uh, the area rep rep stuff. But if I go down, what, uh, what, Dan's, what I'm talking to Dan about is I have access to all the chapters nationwide. And so I go down here to the chapters, and this is, um, you know, get rid of these filters here. And so right now, I think there's 213 chapters, uh, 212 chapters nationwide, 214 chapters nationwide, about four or 5,000 members. So if I look at um, Dan's chapter, for example, uh, it's now the, the tip of Shasta, right? Shasta, yeah, the tip of Shasta. The tip of, Ch of Shasta. And I go into Shasta here, and I go to the roster. I, each category is represented by one member. Conflicts of interest are disallowed. Once a person owns a category, nobody else can come in that group. So all I'm going to do here, Dan, is I'm just going to take your category here. Where you at? Internet web design, right? So internet web design, you click on Dan, and I get this access, anybody in the tip, right? I get access to their email, their phone number, everything about them. And, but what I want to find out is what his category is. So I want to look, take this category here and I want to go, okay, boom. And um, <clears throat> there are other organizations out there that you can do this with, but this is probably the most, this is the only reason I joined the tip is I wanted access to this. And so I go and I look up this category here, and he is Internet Web Design. So I'm just going to paste his category here. So if you see, there's only 50 members out of 214 chapters that have your category. Well, the 50 chapters, the 49 chapters, the one that you're, the 49 that you're not a part of, you can't approach the per, per bylaws. You cannot approach those people about your services. Okay, but you can approach all the other chapters about your services. Okay, and you have the right to do that. And so I'd figure out who I'd print this out here, and I would eliminate all these people off the list. Okay, and I would contact all the other chapters, and I'd just go in, man. I'd I'd be like, I'm going to go right on in here and go. Uh, I'll just use my chapter as an example, and I go into the roster, and. I would phone number in here, their email, uh, get rid of the category, get rid of the position, get rid of that, get rid of that, uh, company, uh, yeah, probably the category, close, and then all I'm going to do, those of you that uh, are in the tip probably going to watch this, is I'm just going to go right here, and I'm going to highlight all that. 
I'm going to copy and paste it into an Excel spreadsheet. I'm going to put the categories at the top. I'm going to import it into my CRM. I'm going to email every single freaking one of them. Uh, hey, how you doing? It's John Pyron. You know, nice to meet you. I'm in this little tip chapter. You know, we're in the same boat. This is great. I'd love to get a chance to know you better, you know, and, and then I'm going to follow up with a phone call because it's going to be a warmer call, you know. And so it's like I'm Dan from the tip, not Dan from Red Hot Media Productions, you know. And every time I've run this strategy within the tip and taught other people to do it, their response is incredible because you're calling from – you're a fellow the tip member. You're not Dan of Red Hot Media Productions trying to sell them a website. Mm -hmm. And so those are some of the things that I do that I would advise – uh, if you want to be able to do it yourself and play to your personality and your strengths is either have somebody – I wouldn't spend your – if you got the cash and the money, I'd pay I'd pay Allison here. I'd pay Allison. I'm like, hey, man, you know, I want you to spend an hour a day just doing nothing but scraping the tip and populating the spreadsheet, you know, and, and you know, updating my database. And then once you've done that, hey, you know, do you mind making phone calls for me? Do you mind sending the email? No problem. Do you mind making the phone call? See, so some of the some VAs need, you know, some business owners. Hey, I just need two hours a week. I just need five hours a week. You know, but find the skill set that you need. And the way uh, the way we're structuring Allison's business here is is she's got an incredible talent with coordinating. And so we're going to build a multitude of VAs with special skill sets to where you, all you got to do is pick up the phone and call Allison and go, hey, I need this skill set. It's up to her to find the person and manage the person for you. Okay. So um, but that kind of does, gives you some ideas on what your options are. I wouldn't spend in your type of business. It would be definitely worth four or five hundred bucks a month to have somebody else do this crap. The amount of return on 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 investment there is going to be huge. I have Sonia do this for me, and I I pay an average probably 100, 120 bucks a week, and she takes care of all my social media shit. You know, um, but to set to make phone calls, that's what's missing in your business, right? Pick up the phone and make phone calls. You don't want to do it. You find that you don't want to do something in your business. Find somebody else to do it. You don't have the money to to, to have somebody else do it. Then you go out and you do it yourself in the meantime, you get the money, and then you give that money that you, you take your client's money, you give it to this person and have them service you. Okay. Any questions about that? Nope. Anybody else got any other feedback or comments? Good. Nope. Okay. Who's next? And if you're trying to talk, you're muted. Okay, so nobody else. All right, so everything that we talked about, go back and watch the recording. But I will uh, will tell you this: joint ventures will save you. Let me, let me make sure I'm going to say this correctly. You can grow your business by making two, three hundred cold calls a day or a week. You can do it. Okay? And it will work, and it will take a lot of work. An easier way to do it would be to find somebody else going after your exact client, have a meeting with them, sit down and see if you like them, and then create a joint venture where you're going to do things together. I'll give you a, a classic example, and I'm going to let you go because this is an incredible strategy. So I go after small business owners, business owners that are under a million dollars. For one side of the business, business owners are between one and five million on the other side. The ones that I'm going, I want to go after more companies that have between one and five million, which means they have about anywhere from eight to 25 employees. So, who's got my client? Well, who, what does a company that size use from a service standpoint? They all use an HR company. Most of them use an HR company, especially if they're in California and they're smart. Because you can get in a lot of trouble if you don't have your act together from an HR standpoint. So I'm like, I need a good, solid HR partner. So I went out and, and tapped my network, got referred to Harbor HR. Uh, give them a plug here on the call. 
referred to them last September, and we're able to connect with them. Client of mine just referred them to me again. Hey, I want you to check out this HR company. So I finally went out and met with them. Great company, 65 clients. I'm like, ding, ding, ding. They got 65 small business owners. I've got business owners. We're going after the same client. I like the guy. I like I like the office staff. Had a great time. Spent about an hour and a half with them. Walked out of there going, you know what? We are going to make a whole lot of money together because we're both going after the same client. So now what's the next step? Well, we followed up with an email. I sent him an email going, hey, you know what? I really want to take this relationship further. Let's meet again. So at the next meeting, basically, we're going to get together, and I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to find a client for you, and you're going to find a client for me so we can vet one another and test each other out. And that's going to happen, and then if everything goes smooth, I'm going to get a, client, a great referral out of it. They're going to get a great referral out of it, and everything goes well. In about a week, we're going to have a system in place where we meet on a regular basis, and we give each other referrals, and it's a system. And and I'll get probably six to seven referrals a month just from that relationship and vice versa. We're going to do joint venture stuff like webinars together. Uh, we're going to split costs on promotions and, and marketing. See, when you have people like myself, Dan, Alan, Allie, Harbor HR, these other people that we're all going after the same client, it's a lot easier to uh, keep the cost low from a marketing standpoint, but also – Man, nothing closes quicker than a referral client. You know? So I hope that's been helpful. Um, go out and make it happen this week. Share this call with other people. Uh, share it to your news feed. Like it. Make comments on it. And encourage people to show up here every single Wednesday, 2 p.m. Pacific time. So I hope it's been valuable for you. Take care and have a great day.